Well, that looks like shit. Gonna show you the four things that went wrong with this and how to correct them for TIG welding. So the number one thing you wanna do is comfort for yourself. Sit down at the bench like you're eating a meal. <clears throat> Next thing is torch, how you wanna hold it. I'm right-handed. Torch is gonna be in my right hand. Set your hand up like this, almost like uh, shoot and pull. But start with the torch in a vertical. Just lean it back about 10, 20 degrees. No more than that. Anything like this, which is what I was first doing on that welding, your gas shielding is blowing away and it's pulling in oxygen and contaminants right behind it into your weld pool. You don't want that. You wanna be like here. If you're left-handed, same thing. Start vertical, just tilt back. You wanna have a movement like this. That's why you want the side of your hand running. Another important thing is your tungsten to your substrate. You wanna keep that distance there consistent as you're going across. Next thing is tungsten prep. Let me show you this. Now we got properly prepped tungsten. Gonna put this back into the torch. Got a stick out here, as you can see about 316. So let's put together what we learned so far about the comfort, torch angle, and just run a little bead. For initial setup, we're using the TIG 200 ACDC here. Very robust and easy to use machine. We're welding on 1 8 coupons. That's 120 thousandths of an inch. Rule of thumb is one amp per thousandths. So we're gonna put this right up at about 125 amp. 100% argon, we're gonna set our regulator to 20 CFH. Now let's get start welding. So we'll set the torch up straight, just roll it back 10, 20 degrees. We already prepped the tungsten. We have a stick out of about 316. And I'm gonna keep that same 316 from my material and just do slow, steady movement. Thing with TIG welding is very, very easy. It's about puddle control. That's what we're gonna do. We're gonna form a puddle here, and then we're gonna drive that in specific areas around here. Now, how the machine works is with a foot pedal or a trigger control. We're gonna use foot pedal. We set the machine up at 125 amp. <clears throat> Just think of this as the gas pedal in a car. This is zero, that's 125 amp. You could float anywhere in between there. So we're gonna be just about full throttle. Let's go ahead and show you that. So we're comfortable. Again, the torch, got our gloves on here for safety. Straight, lean it back, 3 16 I'm gonna go straight across here with the puddle. <clears throat> so we're gonna wait for our puddle to form. There we go. Now again, we're just sliding. Consistent motion, as you can see. We're not varying the height. Trying to keep that tungsten the same height from the material. And we're not doing anything with the puddle except controlling it. We can go down, we can go over. Great practice lesson. All right, so we just finished that. <clears throat> and you can see what we have here. We just controlled that puddle, going straight across for about two and a half, three inches there. We came down a little and then moved again. Important thing you're looking for is the heat effect zone. You'll hear people call it haze, other things, but that's this discoloration on either side of the weld pool. You wanna keep that as tight as you can to the weld pool, but not too close that you lack your penetration. You can still see the penetration we have through the material here. What you're looking for is this consistent distance on each side of the pool. If you start seeing this getting wider, narrower, wider, smaller, that means you're lifting your tungsten, which is varying your arc, your amperage, et cetera. So that's what you wanna keep, uh, keep practicing. So the last thing that we're gonna do right now is introduce the filler rod. <clears throat> In place of the torch, we're gonna use this Sharpie. And the reason is just so you can see what's happening here. Same hand position, again, torch straight up, lean back 10, 12 degrees. Instead of 3 16 off of the substrate, I'm gonna actually color on it. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead, full throttle on the pedal till we see our puddle. And you'll see it in steel to turn to a nice shiny liquid puddle. <clears throat> then what we're gonna do is we're gonna move about a puddle diameter. Dip the rod into the leading edge of the puddle, not into the tungsten, not into your glove, not behind the puddle, the leading edge. When this happens and it all comes together for you, it's awesome. You'll see a droplet of that rod, pull off your rod, go right into the puddle, and it'll lay that iconic dime that you're looking for. So again, we form our puddle, we move about a diameter, dip the rod in front of it, move, dip, move, dip, move, dip. That's your cadence, move, dip. So when you're doing this, 
See my rod movement? I'm not going way out here. I'm not going behind. What you don't want to do is take this rod outside of the shielding gas that's coming out of your torch. And now you're going room temperature, 6,000 degrees. Room temperature, 6,000. What that does is that falls the end of the rod. You come into the puddle, you have contaminants. It doesn't lay right. So keep the rod, like I have it here, inside that shielding gas envelope. Dip, move, dip. And we're going to start at this easy cadence. We're not doing anything with the pedal. We're not pulsing anything like that. You're just keeping it full throttle. What you're going to see is, you know, that, that heat effect zone may be really great on our practice coupon. And that's because we're moving slow. Easiest thing to learn with TIG welding is move slow and deliberate. Yes, you can move a lot faster and control that heat effect zone. We're not going to do it that way. We're going to be comfortable in our movement. Then what we can do is we simply dial back the amperage on the machine, which tightens up our heat effect zone. So let's do this on some steel. So we're going to get a puddle going, and then we're going to move, dip, move, dip. There's our puddle. Dip in the rod, move, dip. See the rod right in front of the puddle? Okay, so we finished that up there. It looks pretty good for putting together the four things that we just learned there. Heat effect zone is a little bit larger than what we want. I think that's because we we're just trying to go slow to have the camera get in there. But now we're gonna use those four same skills that we just learned here and do a lap weld for you. All right. All right, so now we're done. <clears throat> we used our four techniques. You keep practicing them. These are the results that you're gonna get. So you wanna pick up this TIG welder? Start this on your own. Just visit eastwood.com.